Hello and welcome back to linuxjobber.com where we prepare you for Linux jobs. My own name is Sean Me Joseph and my email is showpopulous at gmail.com. If you have any questions, please send them to me and I'll be sure to answer your questions for you. For today, we will be looking at a very, very important part of Linux administration, something that's very useful to all companies, something that um, a lot of companies use and ask about on Linux interviews. And the first thing we will do is to go to linuxjabba.com, go to home, go to tutorials and go to proficiency to see what we should be working on right now. When we get to proficiency, uh, what we'll be looking at when we get to proficiency is actually lab 107. So let's go down to, let's scroll down to lab 107, which is right here. And you will see a number of videos when you click on number two right here. And uh, let's go to the lab. Um, so this lab here is talking about DNS, right? And we're going to, in the previous video, we used, um, in the previous video, we used LDAP to create, uh, we used Kickstart to create uh, machines. And I showed you how to use Kickstart to create machines. So you would have to look at uh, Lab 106. This is Lab 107 up here. You would have to look at Lab 106, the previous video, to see how that works and step-by-step -step instructions on how to use Kickstart to create a new machine. For this lab here, 107 now, you're going to create a new machine called admin. You would have to watch that video if you need to know how to do that. Now, this admin server, this admin server here will now install LDAP on it. What is LDAP? This is something that a lot of companies use. And I will explain what is LDAP in details in this video. So now, let me start with the explanation of what is LDAP. Now, a lot of companies, a lot of people look at LDAP and they do say that it is very difficult to understand, it's very difficult to configure because they skip something. If you want to learn something, you have to learn the basics and then learn how to configure. So first of all, you have to understand what is LDAP before you even try to start using LDAP. And the reason a lot of people say LDAP is complicated or that it is difficult is because they don't first try to understand LDAP, what it is. They just want to start using it. And obviously, when you jump steps like that, you're going to say, oh, yeah, this is very difficult just because you don't understand what it is. So the first thing you need to do is to say, what is LDAP? And I, in this video, I will explain what LDAP is and how it's laid out. And once you understand what LDAP is and how it's laid out, it will be very easy for you to configure it because you will understand what you're doing. And there are many videos out there about LDAP on YouTube. But the problem is, is that people tell you what to do. They don't tell you what is working behind the hood. I mean, under the hood, how it is laid out. They don't tell you what you need to understand. They just tell you how to do things, how to do or what to do not how it works so take your time calm down and relax and understand how it works when you understand how it works you will really find out that ldap is actually very very simple so stay with me let's get started so if you're trying to learn ldap understand that there are four layers and i'll tell you all the four layers up front it's actually very simple and i'll show you how we're going to get go into all four layers so let me i'm looking for something that i will use to write it down let me use brown to write it down so now layer one is your company now let me make this smaller so that you know it's not this is actually explanation so it should not be that big one your company right you configure company two you configure the branch where you work. Three, you configure, um, you add a, a group where you belong, what you will call a department. And then four, you add users to the department or the groups for users. And that's it. It's very simple. This is all LDAP is. So as you can see, this is not complicated at all. Why is it not complicated? because this is exactly how every company is laid out. 
no matter how big or small, no matter whether or not they combine functions, it's still going to, you can still break every company down to these basic structures. So now let's get started. So to learn LDAP, the first thing you need to do is that you imagine this is the LDAP directory. This is the book, right? So let's just call this our LDAP directory, right? I'm just going to go here and I will say LDAP directory. Or some people call it database. So you can call it LDAP directory or LDAP database, whichever one you want. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you understand how it's laid out. So the first thing we need, I need, I'm going to do is that I'm going to label this book, right? So this is my company, right? Every company must have what? A name, right? So I'm going to say the name of this company is uh, Linux Jobber LJ. Co. Linux Jobber Company. You see, this is the name of company, right? That's the first thing you have to do to this book. So we're looking at this book here called LDAP Directory or LDAP Database. And first we give it a name, right? It must have a name. Now, the number two thing we must have is what? Is what? You have to have the branch or what you can call organizational unit in some cases. So in EDAP, EDAP actually called this OU, right? And then we can call this, let's just call it branch, right? And the name of our branch will just say, okay, let's just say we work for Linux job at company. And then we say spring students, right? Let's call that one Linux job at spring. Spring, right? So this is for the spring students. So now, or you can have branch oh i spelled branch incorrectly isn't, isn't that nice let me remove it i don't like to spell things incorrectly so now you can have branch branch one branch one linux jobber spring and then branch two linux jobber four linux jobber four so Every company has a name and under every company, there are different branches. So this is the name of the company. This is a, these are the two branches that this company has. This gives us the label for this book. Done. Who is authorized to look at this book, right? This is the admin or what you call an administrator. And because my name is Joseph, I'm going to say I'm the admin, right? And this is all you have to do for the first two steps, right? Give the give your company a name, put your branch in there. Now, the next part of it is we're going to specify the department where we work and we're going to specify users. So now let's, let's look at it this way, right? Let's explain this one on the outside. So that's not in front of the book anymore. That's explained on the outside, right? So now, Let's bring out a branch. So I'm going to say, because it's springtime right now, actually this is February. I'm doing this February 22nd of 2015. So let's just say this is spring. LJ Spring is a branch that I am in involved with in this company. So when I join the company, I take care of the spring. Um, let's just say uh, the spring sessions, right? Inside the spring sessions, you now have what you call uh, departments, right? So now, um, uh, let me. I'm going to put three departments in here, just so that you understand how a company is laid out. And it's very simple. Every company is laid out the same way, right? So now, let's look at it. The first, uh, the first department in here is actually called students. It's actually called students. And then the next department is called instructors. Instructors. And then there's another department that does, you know, collecting money and, you know, talking to the people, picking up the phone and whatever else they do. Let's call this administ administrative, right? That's all it is. And I will 
label this in a way that you will understand it in a second the same way that LDAP does it so you can understand how all of this is grouped then the last part of it so this is the step three the departments right and then the last part of it is actually what you will call the users you just add users to it so I'm not a student at Linux Jobber I'm an instructor at Linux Jobber right and my name is going to be here but let's just pick students for the purpose of our exercise right so there are plenty of students in this in in this thing here there are plenty of students you can have as many students as you want inside your LDAP directory so now I'm gonna say I'm gonna go here so now so now let's add some students to this department and I'll show you how everything ties together in just one second so let's say we have Jane and then we have Kim we have Sam and then we have John you know what let's not pick John I pick um, Jason I pick Jason so now look at how everything ties together you have one company it splits into two two branches we pick one branch it splits into many departments inside the department we pick one student it splits into students the student names simple as this this is how exactly how every LDAP is every company is laid out and once you understand this you can understand LDAP very well now let's label it the way LDAP labels so that we do understand what is really happening so LDAP this is what you call this part here is actually called domain components so let me let me type it in so you can see it this part here is actually called DC or you can call the domain components domain I forgot the domain so you want to call this ooh, let's go into the next line and that will make it look tacky so I'm gonna draw this out so you can see it clearly all right so now this part is actually called domain component so DC equal to Linux Jobber DC equal to company right so now I'm going to call this I'm going to label this out as this is my domain component right DC DC right now this part here is called organizational units I don't have space to type this one out so you just have to know what it is this part is actually called OU organizational units maybe I'll type it down here so let me call let me type it up here organizational units so these are called OUs OUs right in LDAP so this is step one DC step two organizational unit and this is also the level of organizational unit we're just bringing out one organizational unit so this is actually an OU right so now this part is actual you can call this groups this whole set down here is groups right so LDAP will call this groups groups and then this part you can call it users so here are the users right now LDAP will call this this whole part the groups and the um, 
the groups and the users LDAP will call them uh, what you call entries. So this is the domain component part, organizational unit part, and this part down here is called entries. So now let me type this here. Always remember that this is these are the entries. Anything below this point here is called an entries. Anything down this way is an entry. So the groups, ooh, the groups and the users are just entries. Oh boy. So these are LDAP entries, right? And um, hmm, what did I do? Anything down below here is an entry. So groups and users are entries. So how does LDAP really work? So now let me label all of this so you truly understand how this is laid out. So these are the entries. This is an organizational unit and this is domain components done is LDAP difficult no there are three portions to it three different parts the domain component part the organizational unit part and then the entries part the entries part you know you have groups and users right and that makes all the four parts and it's actually very easy so now each page in this book right when you go inside the book why is it giving me this Okay, good. So now each page in this book is what I just opened up. So I'm opening up this LDAP book now. This this same book that we have here is when we open it up. This is the cover, the book cover that we just did. And we explained and I explained what's going to be inside the book, which is each page. And that's what you call entries, right? And then this is an entry. So let's just say I type in here, entry. This is, uh, let's pick Jane, right? Jane is one entry in the book, right? And then it, Jane will now have all of Jane's information down here. I'm not going to start typing everything because I don't want to waste so much time on that. So Jane's information will now go inside here and her, her organizational unit, uh, everything, her group, and all of her phone number everything now goes in here and that's all LDAP is exactly very simple step one company step two the branch step three the department step four the users i'll go over it again up here step one the company down here domain component step two the branch called organizational unit step three is the entries so we pick groups first right the groups or you can call it department same thing so we call it department down here, we call it groups up here. Then step four, the users, right? And it's done. That's all LDAP is. Now, I think configuring it is where people get confused and people start having questions. So the next step, which is what I'm going to go to next, will then be the configuration. So now let's take, let me take a look at this. So now um, I go back to Linux Jobam. And I'm going to go and do the configuration for you. So let's go to proficiency lecture. If you then go back to the website and you go to here, you'll see the second video. Click on lect on that lecture notes. Click on the number two. You'll see the second video that explains details step by step of how to configure everything that we have talked about using this actual using this actual um, layout. As an example and I will keep pointing back to this layout just to make sure that you do understand each configuration clearly well thank you very much for watching this video uh, if you have any questions like I said before my own name is